Hey Bulldog fans, welcome back to another edition of the Bryant Basketball Coaches Show. I'm Tristan Hobbs and I'm joined by the head coach of the Bryant Men's Basketball Team, Jared Grasso. Coach, 2-0 weekend, uh, your first NEC weekend sweep. It comes at the perfect time. Uh, set your team up for uh, to hold its own destiny as far as earning a playoff bid. How proud of were you? Got, uh, how proud of your team were you this past weekend? Yeah, no, I mean for the last three or four weeks we were very close, and that's what I had talked about throughout. Like you don't know when you can get over the hump, and I think we had a great first half against Wagner, and then they came back and we grinded out a win, which. That game was very similar to other games that we lost on a bounce going the wrong way or a whistle or some different things. So <clears throat> we found a way to gut that one out and then obviously played very well on senior day against Mount St. Mary's. Very good offensive performance. I thought we really defended and rebounded. And so a good weekend for us. And now we got to prepare to go on the road and play two very difficult games and difficult venues. So, But we do control our own destiny, and that's something we talked about all year. We're going to worry about ourselves. and what we do every day and not worry about every el- everyone else. That's going to co- the way we're going to continue to prepare. 70 points or less, your team is almost unbeatable. I mean, two games last week, you held both teams under 70 points. How happy are you this time of year to have that kind of defensive effort? Yeah, I, mean, I think two weeks ago we kind of said we need to get back to the drawing board and start defending a little better and thought we had a good uh, week of preparation, preparing for the last two games, and obviously the way we defended showed. And again, it's something we're going to hang our hat on the next two days. We have to guard and rebound in order to get out and transition and play the way we want offensively. So everything we do starts on the defensive end, and it's something we've preached quite a bit. And again, we're in crunch time here, last week of regular season play, but we want to continue improving. We're not going to say this is the team we are and we've peaked. We have to continue getting better because we want to play our best basketball in March. Both games last week really spread out offensively. Everybody contributing, they got a chance to uh, in those two games. How much does that give this team confidence, knowing that, hey, no matter who you put out there, is going to help this team win? Yeah, I mean, I think the seven guys who played the majority of our minutes really had, had good weekends um, from top to bottom. And different. it's always been in spurts. You know, guys will have a great run in the first half, then someone else will make shots in the second half. And I think Juan Cardenas has really stepped forward and is starting to emerge as the player we thought he could be. And... We knew there was going to be an adjustment period for him coming off not playing anywhere last year. And, you know, he had some struggles early on adjusting to the speed of Division One basketball. But I think he's been terrific and has kind of propelled us. And Joe Kasperzik isn't a freshman anymore. He's played so many minutes that we discussed, you're not a freshman anymore. You've played 28 minutes a game for 25-plus games. So now you're an upperclassman now. And I think he's starting to think like one and play like one. But most importantly, think like one. You can see in video sessions and when we're teaching stuff in practice – He's completely look you in the eyes, locked in, and it's the growth of becoming a freshman and, and moving forward. And I'm really proud of those two guys because they had some struggles early on, and they're really playing good basketball for us right now. And then Saturday, it seems every game you've played this year has been kind of a antagonizing, stressful, high intensity. And then Saturday, your team comes out and plays so well and almost puts the game away by halftime. How pleased were you with that instinct and the ability to to, to get the lead and to maintain it? Yeah, we were due for one of those. I mean, every <laughs> game has been a grind all year, so it was actually nice to be in a game where it's not nip and tuck in the last five minutes. And I'm still a nervous wreck when the game lead goes down to 16. To me, it feels like it's a tie game. But you still coach every possession. The thing we've talked about all year is compete against the possession. Don't worry about the scoreboard. And I talked that, about that at halftime, and I think at the – 12-minute media timeout, I told these guys, I'm not going to beg you guys to finish this game. Taylor, Byron, you guys are seniors. You guys finish the game. I'm not going to sit here and beg and plead for you to defend. And and they kind of stood up in that huddle and, no, we got this, coach. We're good. And they carried themselves the right way and played the right way for the rest of the game. It's easy when you have a big lead to start taking quick shots and getting comfortable. And next thing you know, it's a single-digit game. So I really like their maturity, understanding that they need to kind of keep their foot on the pedal and keep pushing and keep playing the way we play. And Good win for us moving forward, but now preparing for two completely different teams this weekend, and it's going to be a, a week of trying to get better, trying to improve, to be prepared to play on Thursday, and that's our only thought is getting ready for St. Francis. Some say around the holiday season it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm sure for you as a head basketball coach, now you're entering the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, your team has an ability to uh, make the playoffs with a win, hold your own destiny, uh, and then from there, clean slate. Thoughts on this time of year and, and what you're most excited for? Well, I mean, I've been blessed to be a part of March Madness in some capacity each of the last uh, eight years. Every year as I, I was at Iona, we played in the postseason, um, had success in conference tournaments, and played in, in either the NIT or NCAA tournament the last seven years. And actually, our last two shoot arounds, I've worn my March Madness socks, my March Madness hat, because it's something I talked about. We're trying to be our best in March. That's when you want to peak. 
and that's what we've worked towards. And I think we're continuing to improve, and hopefully our best basketball is ahead of us. But as a college basketball coach, college basketball player, what you're always trying to do is playing and playing meaningful games in late February and March, and we're doing that right now, which means our program's moving in the right direction. For, unfortunately for some of those guys last year in the middle of February, they weren't playing for anything anymore. It's fun when you're playing in high-level games, high-level intensity, and you're playing for something. You know, the Wagner game, national television, huge game for us in the standings. That's what it's about. That's the same as St. John's playing Seton Hall last weekend when they're both fighting again in the NCAA tournament. We're fighting for the same thing. We're fighting for to get in the conference tournament and our positioning in the conference tournament. So I think it's great for our guys that they can be a part of those kind of games. And now this last weekend, we've proven we can win those kind of games. Head coach Jared Grass of the Bulldogs on the road this weekend down to Brooklyn. If you're in the Brooklyn area, be sure to stop, uh, stop out to St. Francis Brooklyn or LIU Brooklyn on Thursday or Saturday. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you.